We already botched the intro. Can we just do it again? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll let's just do it again. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll let's do it again. <laughs> What's up, Jake? Po Wait, oh, I did it wrong again. Right, we'll, we'll go again. One, one more time? One we'll more do it one more time. Yeah, one more time. One more time. We'll get it right. Rare Hatless Josh in the studio today for another epic Miniature Monday. Shout out to Max Pyre, Sharky, Sydney, to Shadow Raven, Kirk No Twisted, Doma Reaper, John, Freestyle HQ, everybody else hanging out in the chat. Woo! Here we are. We have survived another full Miniature Monday painting kit and more kits are on the way. Now we finally handled that. It is approved and stamped in. So uh, whenever, uh, literally I'm gonna be getting my hands on everything we need for uh, hopefully the rest of the kits for the following quarter. Um, there might be a delay, there may not. Obviously we have no idea what's going on um, in the world outside of what's happening today. Um, but we're moving forward. So um, assuming I can paint a lot over the rest of this week, um, everything should be ready. Uh, for releases after that. So hopefully we're cool. So that means uh, Monday the 30th, um, we will be working on Big Shadow Dragon Boy here, which uh, a lot of you at home have been following along as I've been working on this guy. Um, but during that meantime, right, that will be sort of the layover for getting the new kits out. So thank you everybody that's been uh, pleading on Facebook, seeing what the situation may be. So, uh, but beyond that, we are working on our hero today. The prep video is available for those of you that do exclamation point prep uh, in the chat. We'll, we'll, de we'll de logify our screen there. Um, but so you'll be able to see that. Honestly, the prep was nothing. All I did was just file off some um, mold lines. The, the metal was really, really clean. Yours may need a little bit more uh, cleanup work, but honestly, it's like nothing crazy. So, um, but. That is pretty much everything. Uh, if you want to go into the close cam, we'll check out our mini that we are working on today. Funny side note, our, our bot seems to have uh, wanted, wanted to block the term Inquisition. Oh, I know. I just saw that. That's really weird. Like, why? So here she is in all of her glory today. Uh, you can see we're using sort of the same color combo, pretty on the nose for everything else that we've done. Um, but we're going to have some of our spider goo combo here, which is nice, um, on the blades. And then finally using the copper vertigris, vertigris, uh, vertigris uh, on the nice cloak. We're going to be rocking out with that clear red, some of the magma red. Um, I forget exactly what I mixed it with. I think some of the uh, alien goo to give it a little bit more of an orange tint on the brown. And that's pretty much it. We have some uh, like light purpley... Uh, gray on the rest of the clothing and it's so fitting that our heroine uh, for the end of the March kit is wearing a face mask. All I'm saying for five dollars I will guess your lottery ticket numbers that's all I'm saying but <clears throat> so uh, you know she is quarantined up ready to rock and roll. By the way for those of you that were watching the free Patreon stream I did on Saturday YouTube uh, gave me a community strike took down the video and said that I violated their community standards because I had the title as Quarren Stream. That's just clever. It was, yeah, I know, it was the algorithm thinking I was doing some weird oh. quarantine, like COVID video or something, but anyway. So, um, but I thought that was hilarious. So I may, have to, I may have to redo the actual physical title on those videos whenever I put them out. Oh, and then of course, so if you guys haven't been watching, uh, or following along at home. Now this guy is looking crazy, I feel like, <laughs> underneath our color settings today, or the lighting. Either way, we've been uh, prepping our Shadow Dragon for completion uh, next Monday. So of course I've been working on this guy every single day. Um, and uh, eventually we're gonna get him to a point where we can finish him out on camera next Monday, which could be from my house, uh, could not be. But either way, um, really the only thing I'm worried about getting remotely done at all is this homie down here, the poor victim that's hiding the broken finger, but we should get really, really close. So if you haven't been keeping up with that, those videos are available other than the last one uh, on YouTube, but they're also on my Facebook uh, page as well indefinitely. So, but we can go ahead and get started today. What I may end up going for first, to be honest, is probably the cloak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some noir black and I'm also gonna grab copper verdigris. So 
we have this here. If you don't have this color, um, if you have Surf Aqua or anything similar to it, it should work just fine for you. But we're using this bad boy today. And then, like I said, I'm going to be using some Noir Black. So would you say, Josh, I know that we're like 12 episodes deep now. Would you say that really on, on any of these uh, kits, essentially, that all of the colors are interchangeable? That if you just follow the technique, you can make whatever Technicolor mm. rainbow version of whatever you're doing, right? Yeah, so that was, that was one thing that I've heard a lot of feedback from is that people are, are picking up what I'm putting down. You know what I'm saying? Where uh, pretty much the way that I paint doesn't require wet mixing. It doesn't require specific color usage, right? As long as you are just applying the paint in the same order of operations that I do, you can use whatever you want. Um, and it will essentially give you the same result every time. So you can just sub any color that you need. You can sub highlight colors. I've seen some people doing that um, with some of the other kits, like changing up sort of small things here and there. Um, but yeah, really just the way that I sort of layer the paint on makes it a little bit easier for you to just sub and mix and match whatever you're doing. Um, and too, there's a, you know, when I'm at home, what's, what's funny is using these colors is actually breaking me out of my shell in that regard, uh, because at home I only use 32 colors. Um, and that's it, uh, and I have tons of each one uh, that I have sort of in reserves, but um, I'm used to painting in that style of being like, I don't need a pre-mixed color, whatever the case is there, because I just know that I can go in and layer whatever's on my palette at the time, and I'm not worried about color matching or anything like that. So uh, limiting myself has actually increased my output in painting, which um, kind of makes sense, right? Like eventually, it's kind of like if you have a closet full of a thousand shirts, how do you know which shirt you're gonna wear type of thing? You know, if you just only give yourself so many options, you're going to figure out the easiest, most efficient way to work from there. So that's why I like the limited palette that we use, because, yeah, you can change it up. Painter's choice, as I always say, on certain objects, but it also sort of teaching you to be more confident and like, oh, I don't really have to have a premixed color for everything. Um, and then the more paints you actually do own, you start realizing like, oh, I actually like using uh, Alien Goo for like any highlighting on green because of the way that it works. So, but... Um, Beyond that, that, that is a good question, though, because, yeah, obviously we can mix and match and do whatever we want um, with a lot of these colors, and they would all work the same. So what I'm doing is about a 50-50 mix of the copper and uh, the noir black. Now, I forgot my brushes today, so I'm actually using one of the Reaper sables, so we'll see how this goes. I'm going to be so afraid not using my, my crutch of a brush. Thank you for the uh, sub, McKinney. Thank you. Hey, Peter, Mac thank you for the sub, Peter. McKinney? Peter McEnany. McEnany. Peter has been a longtime uh, Patreon person and friend. He came to my in-person workshop that I did last year uh, in the Airbnb. Probably not doing that anytime soon. I remember I, I, I think we had sort of, we were eyeing April or May for this year's in-person workshop, and uh, obviously we're not doing that. So, But Peter's a really great friend. We've played, uh, what had, we had played some um, Conan Exiles. I still see him playing that game. Now Sydney and I are playing Stardew Valley, so. Uh, oh, man. How is that, by the way, with two people? Uh, with two people, it's great because you, like, very quickly you get into the, the deal where you're like, yo, I can't do anything except water my plants in 24 hours. Like, that's all you can do. Mm -hmm. And so with two people, we split the bill, and then one person goes mining, and then, you know, we, it's fun. It's that been fun. That fantastic. Actually. And it's also literally completely brainless. So, like, there's no one, like, we are just on it. Like, we don't talk. Like, we'll be sitting next to each other, or we'll be on the phone. We don't talk for, like, two hours, and we're just playing. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so. And then when we're feeling a little bit more rambunctious, we'll play um, Guild Wars, or we also played... Uh, Carcassonne, which I've been loving uh, on Steam. It's so, it's honestly playing Carcassonne on the computer is like so efficient. It's amazing. But uh, I had a good time completely, absolutely destroying uh, another level of trust in our relationship as I beat Sydney about four times in a row. But it was fun. A lot Perfect. of those games, you know, a lot of those games were really close, and I know she was doing her best, but that's how we've been handling it. Ah, Stardew Valley, the, the much better Animal Crossing. Yeah, right? That's what was funny, because I don't have a Switch or anything, so everyone's like, Animal Crossing, and I'm like, well, we got this Stardew Valley, so maybe we can rock out with that. It was a close game. Nah, she lost by, like, I think, like, six points. So 
she usually like when it comes to uh, Carcassonne, our games are usually really really close unless I just get some crazy draw. But and then we were gonna play uh, Betrayal, um, but the Baldur's Gate version. So that'll be really fun too. Oh, that sounds fun. That's one of my favorite games. Really really fun. So you can see I've just been layering up the dark mix of our Copper Vertigris and the Noir Black. I'll show you again here on the thumb sort of where I'm at color intensity wise. And you can see very, very thin. What I can tell already is that what's interesting is the Reaper brush has, I would say it holds on to the pigment a little bit more than what I'm used to, which is intriguing. But I'm wondering too what we, because I don't, I've never used these brushes until right now. So let's see. I can notice a slight difference, but I think it's because this is the belly of this brush is a little bit wider than I'm used to, which means I just need like 10% less water. And that's one of the synthetics, right? No, this is one of the. Is sables. that a sable? Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I could probably paint just fine like I normally do, right? It would just take me a little bit to catch up to the finesse of how much water, because yeah, that's about how thin I normally keep it. So. But yeah, I was trying to describe Betrayal to one of uh, my roommates, and I was like, think Scooby-Doo, but someone's secretly trying to kill all of the other people in Scooby-Doo. And they were like, well, this sounds fun. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So now we have that base color in. We're going to start building it up to the rest of that nice copper of verdigree. Of verdigree. So adding in a little bit more as we follow our highlights in the brightest points. So really not too difficult here. And as we typically sort of keep ourselves concerned, um, I don't have to worry like uh, too much about uh, like blending or finesse right now because this is probably step number two of four in terms of our color highlighting here. So really I'm just sort of blocking out the shapes as I typically do. Yeah, I like Betrayal, but I like the I do like the Baldur's Gate version more. I feel like it's um, I feel like it's better. It's more fleshed out, uh, and the some of the mechanics are better because um, they obviously had to include like combat stats and stuff for the D and D classes. So that's worked out nicely. Highlighting the bottom of the cloak here. Because of the position of the body, you can see how it's tilted back. That's why we're leaving so much shadow specifically right there because it's uh, underneath the body. It wouldn't really be getting much reflection at all. <clears throat> I'm relieved to know that any weird symptoms that I have right now, literally though, are like just the worst allergies that we've ever had. I think that's been the most stressful part about this whole thing <laughs> is that it's like, is this shortness of breath, or is this me having asthma from the terrible pollen? <laughs> Correct, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's the worst allergies we've had in a while. My eyes the other day were, like, burning. Walking outside the house to get the mail. I was like, oh, my God, please stop. And then all the trees have been, like, littering the pollen pods over everything. Like, my car is covered in them. Mine, too, actually. Dude, it's insane. It's funny, nature's like, what a great time to be alive. <laughs> Yeah, because of all the, the seasons for the flu to be rough, as well as allergies, this is not the one. Yeah, it's really yeah. working out great. Well, thank you for the uh, sub there, Striding Aragorn. Hey, remember, you also uh, can subscribe for free if you have Amazon Prime. You can always click the Twitch Prime link, the subscribe button in the top right-hand corner if you're watching at home. If you're on mobile, you just got to do a little bit more digging down below, I believe, somewhere, somehow. But either way, you can link it to your Amazon account and subscribe for free. Or if you're just feeling generous, you can subscribe directly for five bucks, I believe, or more. There are other tiers as well. And uh, that also obviously helps everybody here at Reaper in these uncertain times and just buying stuff in general, you know, keeping orders in. Obviously, it's really weird. You know, everyone's hanging on to everything they can. But if you're really, really bored, you want those sweet new sculpts. We have the Jacob Jansen sculpt that I painted for everybody at home that has seen that paint job. Um, and then we also have the sweet, uh, I think it's a, a mage that came out and then um, the cool like fun, the, the bones releases that happen as well. Um, and then I think there's like a crazy executioner. Many of this, that got released this month too. I saw like one photo of it. I haven't looked, I've been just 
busy. <laughs> I've just been busy, but busy. All right, so now I've got this at a point to where I'm relatively ready to just apply copper verdigris. Breaking news. What's breaking news? What's breaking news, John? John. You can't just drop that, but then, like, not. Yeah, like, breaking news, and we sit here with bated breath. Oh, I, I, read, the, I read Jacob's comment. I was like, who's being mean to Jacob? <laughs> That's funny. Breaking news, John ran out of TP. Oh, oh, they're released today. That is cool. There we go. There you go. So you can grab them right then. Right then if you would like. Did that literally just happen? Hence breaking news? I suppose so. All right. <clears throat> now I'm just going to be going directly with our copper verdigris. A little bit of water. One to one ratio. Water to paint. Do we have a, uh, John, do we have a link by chance um, to the new releases for those that you can send me and I can post? Or actually, you're a moderator, so you can post it. But So here's the difference here. Wow, that looks super bright. There you go. That's probably a better idea of the level of difference there. Ron's going to make you a poster of what? You naked in Crocs? Uh, yeah. I'd yeah. buy it. All right. We should make a... Uh, 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 Men of Reaper calendar, shouldn't we? But it's like like the old fireman's calendar. Where we're all like, yeah, I get it. Hold him, yeah, oh, I yeah, get it. yeah, you yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John is uh, using the uh, molten metal scoop that he uses when he's casting. Yeah. It's only this big, um, but it'll it, it's good. It'll cover a lot. Um, but you know, it's all he needs. It's, I mean, I didn't say that. I'm just saying it's what he uses. You know, um, but so John gets to be Mr. January. Oh yeah, I would. I'd love to see him first thing at the beginning of a new year. So I get to be Mister September, <laughs> and it's just gonna be a. It's just gonna be a blank picture. I'm not even gonna be in it. I hate what you just said, Sydney. But anyway, all right. So I'm glad the transcript of the chat's no longer on the replay of the episodes. <laughs> okay. All right, now we're taking copper verdigris. Jeez, let me let me get to work here. All right, so we're going to be applying this directly on top. It's so interesting that until you apply this color directly, it really reads as like kind of grayed out and not as intense. But now I'm really focusing on where I'm applying my highlights, corresponding to the folds on the hood of the cloak and everything else. Oh yeah, just for you, Max Powers. Just for you. I can't imagine anyone would ever buy that calendar either. Everyone would buy it. What I, are you talking there's about? There's no way. Just include an exclusive paint. Oh, and that's, the only that's way. fair. And then yeah. they're, just, they're like, hey, you can keep the calendar, send the paint. Donate yeah. the calendar. Oh, they didn't credit me as the painter? Well, they didn't credit me as the painter on the other paint job I did either, so. <laughs> Surprise. I'd buy it. I'm out of t There you go, Valandar. Perfect. He, he needs out of TP, apparently. Although we would use some, some high-quality gloss paper, so I wouldn't advise flushing that. Mm, we, could, we could just do it on wet wipes so that you terrorize your apartment complex. All right. Going back over the top of the hood. And with this color specifically, I'm able to leave quite a bit unpainted. So this entire sort of area that looks like it's cast in shadow... I'm just not applying paint to. Dealing with sort of a more neutral color, if you have that color mixed with whatever your shadow point is, which is our noir black, you don't have to worry about the saturation as much. It'll just kind of, it'll take care of itself. It's kind of neat how these colors work that way, especially when you're in this kind of territory, so. But I was worried having to use a brush I haven't used before. I was like, oh boy, oh boy. Here I go painting again. But it's working out great. Ron has to go in and manually add it. Like the calendar? That seems a little silly. We're not ready for the calendar yet, John. I'll let him flip through my pages. Uh, okay. For ed uh, to edit. To edit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Editing. Yeah. You can't just release. Gosh, guys. What are you. Is this your first time around here? 
calendar work is real work, okay? It is. It is, is real. It, is that what they say? <laughs> the, the credit, oh, to credit the painter. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I got you, I got yeah, you. yeah. Okay, yeah. No, we're on the same page. Yes, by all means. I like this, this uh, almost Jackson Pollock-esque painting you've made on your thumb here. It's great. I, uh, I'm a little distracted by it. Oh, no. Oh, no. I like where this is going. Oh no, I, I you know, I thought you might do that and you did. That's that's golden. Thank you. Mess it up a little bit. We'll blame the brush. But it's okay, it's alright, we'll get there, we'll get there. Alright. I actually really enjoy layering with this color too. I don't know why. It's something if you are painting this at home it, later on YouTube, uh definitely drop in the comments, uh can't wait for that calendar. So just can't wait for that calendar. Just drop it down in the YouTube, re-upload comments, can't wait for that calendar. But if you're doing this at home, you'll probably pick up on what I'm talking about when you're highlighting with this color and layering with it. It goes from desaturated to super saturated, just directly over the slight amount of noir black that we had in the previous layer. It's a very interesting thing to see. I'm wondering if it has to do with the amount of white that's mixed in with the color. I'm not sure. We'd have to get Sadie in here to have her break down the paint, right? But anyway. Some colors don't do that, and that's I paint enough to know whenever I see it happen, it's like, oh, I wonder what the difference is here. One of these things is not like the other. All right, I'm liking it, though. I think we're doing really, really crispity work. When you hear someone cough downstairs. Yeah, it's like, uh, uh. It's like, I'm going to shut the door. Yeah, right. We're not leaving. Yeah, who needs a face mask? Just give me a Clorox wipe. I'll just breathe through it. Perfect. That, that can I don't know how that's not a thing yet. I mean, I'm sure you shouldn't be breathing in. Hey, that's also not to encourage people to do yeah, that. Yeah, don't do that. I didn't. That's not a thing. Don't be the person that makes that a thing. Tide pods will not heal you, okay? Oh, God. Yeah, exactly. A resurgence of people eating Tide Pods because someone put out on the internet that. It hey, man! If the COVID virus doesn't get you, maybe that's you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. But today, my roommates are trying to go to the uh, restaurant supply store to get a fifty-pound bag of flour. That's the only uh, random ingredient we're missing. But they've been making a bunch of bread. Oh, cool! Yep, a lot like every kind, like sandwich bread, soda bread, bread bowls, whatever you can think of. And then, because um, they have the pizza maker, the rock box, uh, as long as we get a bunch of flour, we're going to make a bunch of pizza. So, Yum. Yeah, the pizzas only take about a minute and 20 seconds to cook. So the, the only real prep you have to do is just let the dough sit for about 24 hours, 48 hours, and then whoosh, ready to go. So, Savage Coyote wants to pay to not have the calendar done. Do what? Oh, he wants to pay to make sure it doesn't happen? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, if you want to pull a government stimulus and pay us to not work and make a calendar, by all means. I mean, either way, there's going to be stimulus involved. Oh, lots of stimulus. Lots of stimulus. Especially in the month of September. Oh, man. All right, I think I've gotten this to a point where we can be pleased. Let's compare. Now, what's funny is this color is going to look much more blue until we put some of that red right next to it to contrast it out and bring out some of the green that's in the copper verdigris. But very, very similar. We went brighter, of course, as we always do, down on the bottom. I don't know why I didn't highlight the bottom on this one. Probably because I wanted her to look like she was in shadow more. But <laughs> Thanks, Max. That's what I needed. That's perfect. Also, Sydney said she would design it for free. All right. Well, um, also, hello, deadbeat artist. How are you? <laughs> hello. I really like the delivery. Hello. On that. that was good. Well, it's, uh, I think that's a new name. I don't think I've seen that person in here. No. I don't know, I don't know that I've seen Rami and Gray either. Um, mm. Sorry if you've been in here before and I didn't notice. Dragizzle 11. Uh, thank you, guys. If you're Actually, you know what? If you are new here and you care to type. Drop a one. Uh, drop a one in chat, yeah. Is I am not Jewish. 
It's funny you ask that, though. I, I was, uh, you know, presumed to be Jewish in, in high school. Really? Yeah, that's a whole other story, though. Hmm. All right, so I think we're good. I'm going to do one more little direct coat here of the color. Oh, they, thank you, yes. Hello. Oh, yeah, okay, we got it. Oh, hey, DM, Evil Rich. Apparently the only new person here. And you've got a sub, so thank you. Jen said, how are you? All right. Now, next color. What what should we work on here? We've got the blades. We've got, yeah, let's, let's do the blades. I say we work with the blades. Yeah, I want to see the blades. All right, so we're going to need two colors. We need jungle moss, and we need alien goop. Boom, there we go. So, working with jungle moss, I'm yes. going to look at the original here. Yes, please. If you're new, uh, make yourselves at home. Uh, and everyone who is here, welcome all the people that are new. Say hello. Make them feel at home. Because, you know, we have a community here. Community? Community. Do we have community spread or just community? Just community. No, we all have community spread at this uh, point. Ah, okay. All right, so I'm just going to coat everything here in a relative... Hey, Vaxar, no idea, but we did get it confirmed today. So there may be a delay, there may not be. <clears throat> but moving forward... What? Oh, I coughed. Yeah. That's heartburn cough, guys. Uh, so uh, moving forward, too, they aren't going to be, like, named uh, the April kit. They're just going to be called, like, the Jungle Kit or whatever because we don't necessarily want to be tied to a month. We're just going to be tied to Mondays only because, of course, we ran into Monday being a holiday, and we weren't expecting that. So, But I'll be taking Jungle Moss here. And all right, so this was too light, so I'm actually going to mix it in. With our noir black. Yeah, my uh, heartburn cough's killing me. There we go. As I drink an energy drink, that'll make it worse. It's okay. We know. I know. I know how to live. All right, much better here. Much darker. So this is 50-50 jungle moss and noir black, and then of course diluted to our one-to-one -one ratio to let some of that zenithal th show through. If you don't zenithal highlight or anything like that, it's all good. This miniature, it, I only really was able to utilize it on the cloak. Everything else you can build up if you need to. And then remember as well, you can always just dry brush a miniature if you don't zenithal stuff with a light coat of gray and then a light coat of white in the brightest areas, and it should be okay. You can get the same, same benefits all the way around. But you can tell that's very, very dark, almost black. And I'm gonna let this dry completely. So we are waiting on some dry paint. If you need, uh, you know, a couple of those those little heartburn candies from last time, if it gets bad, I always keep forgetting to just put some. I need to just put some in my uh, my deal. Yeah, that's fair. I always forget. All right, so this is drying nicely. You can see I'm only waiting on a little bit of that blade to dry, and we're going to attack it. First highlight color will be jungle moss directly. And I sort of followed a strange non-metallic metal, like, uh, just kind of standard order of operation that I do. But then I also try to make them look like magic weapons. So we're, we're kind of messing around with fire here in terms of a repeatable technique. Um, but we should have fun with it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and highlight up the flat portions of the blade edges. And then down towards the bottom. So I'm kind of vignetting or outlining the darkest color that we have on the blade. So the center of the blade should be the darkest part. It's going to be kind of hard to see what I'm doing uh, during this highlight process just because it's such a subtle shift in color, but it'll come, uh, it'll become much clearer. So if you are painting along at home on YouTube later and it's your first time watching, don't just immediately do what I'm doing. Maybe skip forward like uh, another five minutes to see what it turns into and that'll probably give you a better idea at home. But, so now we've got jungle moss, so I'm going to get out our alien goo as we begin to 
this month's favorite color are spider goo, which is jungle moss mixed with alien goo. I feel like we need to put a note into uh, Sadie to say, hey, this is a color now. <laughs> also, uh... also, I just tried to uh, skip ahead five minutes. It didn't work. Oh, well... I know they're taking people's temperatures downstairs, but I think one of them slipped through the cracks, so. Yeah, slipping through the cracks kind of my thing. Hmm. So, 50-50 jungle moss and alien goo. Now, building up on what we had previously, I'm going to try and keep my finger right behind the blade so that the contrast is really bright. I'm going to go ahead and do this entire blade edge here. So that's uh, very, very obvious. Drink every time I say goo, 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 goo. That should do it for you. So. Then outlining the edge and the bottom. You can check that out here. Not too crazy. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of a scratch across the top, a little bit of a scratch on the bottom. Not too crazy. Then this blade right here. Oh, I did see the bot just do that, so I guess I'll go ahead and mention it. If you are buying supplies during your uh, quarantine season, um, do know if you're getting anything off of Amazon, you can always follow through my Amazon link first and then do any of your regular shopping after that, and I will continue to get a little kickback from all of the sales. So that is a way at no extra cost to you to give me a little bit of extra love, which is always highly appreciated. I know quite a few people um, this month have been doing that, which is huge for me. So big, big, big thanks. And then you can always check everything else that I use every single day as well. Um, through the Amazon shop, you can always go to minipainting.studio and uh, follow that link there or follow the link uh, right there in the chat. You can check out everything. Okay, moving to the back of the blades. Yes, liquor stores are counted as essential business in a shelter-in-place order. Got to have people be able to calm down. I wonder, once all of this, once we break through on the other side, Josh, how many people are going to need to go to, like, AA meetings because they've developed an, al you know, an addiction to alcohol? Yeah. Well, AA is done, too, so they're all call-ins. Oh, great. Mm-hmm. There's, I, I would expect a lot of nuanced changes in the world once we're past this because... Uh, and I wonder if people are still going to get dressed up for their, their video uh, sermons and such for, for uh, you know, church. I did see somebody Saturday be like, here's how you give the, our church money and follow the PayPal link. I was like, hey, they're not going to miss a beat. Nope. Not going to miss a bee. You stand at the pearly gates. St. John goes... Did you donate to your church during the COVID crisis? Yeah. Did you use PayPal? Did you use PayPal or not? Can't let you in. All right. So we have applied our spider goo, which honestly, this color is like, there's probably five Reaper colors, so um, that you could work for that. But we, we always just mix off the palette. So now I'm going to add a little bit more of our alien goo, two brush folds, or two brush tip folds, I should say, for everybody that kind of follows along with the measuring method that I do. And we're gonna do the exact same thing, just a little bit less. So, you're gonna see me start outlining my edges here. This time I'm not doing the full edge of that blade, I'm only doing the two edges, creating a little outline, you can see that. There you go, that's cool. Bring it down that edge. And then I'm going to re-pick out one of those little... <laughs> the 
Then, same thing on this blade edge. Now, this is a relatively thin surface to try and outline, so if you don't get it precisely, it's okay. It's the thought that counts. I appreciate you trying. Besides, Miniature Monday miniatures are for you to learn on. These aren't masterpieces, right? This is, this is like homework to make you a little bit more of a confident painter, so don't feel too bad if it's not the crispest blade in the blade drawer. On the re weapon rack, it w I think that'd probably be the, uh, the term there. <clears throat> Why'd you just put in song list, Max? What are you... <laughs> First time here? <laughs> That's one of those like enabled by default like uh, cust like basic commands. And I see. He's he's being funny. I think at this point. I see. We're obviously not requ you know taking requests and doing song that stuff that's built into Mubot. I guess if I do stream from home, we'll have my royalty free music. It'll be the only difference there. Which we could see a lot of. Yep, I'll be I'll be ready and waiting. Whenever yeah. we get there, get a let's get a one in chat if you guys want to see a lot more of Josh in the event that we got to do a lot of home streaming. Uh, in before there's like three ones. <laughs> yeah right. Uh, yes, Josh the Jest. Uh, it's usually on YouTube. It's on the vods here too as well. Um, there's multiple ways to see it. Now on YouTube, it's typically 24 hours or greater later that you see it because of our partnership with uh, Twitch. You gotta wait to be great. Yeah, that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that. That'll do it. Mm-hmm. Yep, that one. All right. Well, you know, Max, I I know that we we talked about that this morning. Anne is basically on her last week before she moves, and she won't be streaming for two weeks after that. So this is basically the last week with Anne. Um, well, for like two more weeks after that, obviously. So there's going to be some downtime there in between. And, you know, I, there's no reason not to maybe have Josh on a little more if he's willing to. Oh, no, no. I don't mean do you want to see more of Josh. Oh, wow. That's fair. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, like, the same amount of Josh, different times. What is... What are you painting? I'm waiting on paint to dry, so we're just doing a little little dragon on an outcropping here. Oh, I like that. It's a little, little, little dragon body. Uh, nope, no one wants to see that, Vaxar. Mm -mm. Shirt off and pasties. <laughs> we're not doing any body painting. So. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't need to worry about that just because there's so much chest hair. So. And, and no, but the two pasties, she said, would be reaper skulls. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Wow, that would be something else. You know, yeah, what Reaper model is this? this? Is actually, I was thinking of the miniature when I was painting that. So, there you go. I'm trying to figure out which one that is. All right, so now I'm just going to use Alien Goo on its own. This will be our final highlighting on our sweet blades. Go down the edges, just like that. Actually, what's funny is the lead hair on this brush is like crazy. That's one thing DaVinci brushes don't have is a lead hair. And this guy's got a lead hair for sure. There's always one hair that goes directly down the center that's longer sometimes on sable brushes. And it allows you to do stuff like that, like line things a little bit easier. So I'm actually not used to having one, which is funny. It's, uh, it's a nice little refreshing change. Then I think what I'm going to do, instead of doing the uh, sort of lines with this guy, uh, with this blade and this highlight color, I'm instead going to do little dots, like magical bubbles rising through the blade itself, like she has a, a poison dagger or something. So just little dots using that lead hair, which is now fighting me every step of the way. I take my statement back. No, I'm just kidding. I just need more water on the brush here. Uh, that's a, is that a, that's not a 30 millimeter base, is it? Round? 30 millimeter round? I have no idea. 
You know what? Let me look it up. It's whatever the basic round is that you guys sell. So if it's 30, it's 30. If it's 25, it's 25. It's 32, 32, whatever. When I asked for bases last time, uh, Reaper Collins so generously shoved his hand in the unsorted base container and just thrust and them then at threw you. them at me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's 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 how I got these. But it was funny because before I was like, yeah, let's do round. And then they were all lipped different. So I had like weird combos to where like I couldn't do one. So, you know, I couldn't do like uh, one kit using all the same color. It was kind of funny. I was like, oh, wasn't expecting that. So now I'm going to do the same thing on this blade. Actually, I love the way this turned out right here, by the way. It looks like it's like bubbling. or yeah, I, I like that, actually. It looks that really looks cool. cool. I'd buy that weapon skin for $5. Ah, uh, microtransactions. Uh. Have you played any of the PoE League, by the way? Not the new one. Oh, okay. We literally never, like, we, we jumped on to just different games real quick. We could, but now now I got a farm to raise, and we just we're about to buy some chickens. So like we got a, you know we got we got mouths to feed on that farm now. Yeah, I'm the one that's doing the farming. Sydney's like, I'm gonna go kill monsters. I'm part of the Adventures League now. I'm like, okay, great. I'm just over here watering plants. Oh, I will max powers. I also haven't played the division since we talked about it that day, but I will. I will add you. Uh, especially if we end up with more home time here going forward. Doing the same thing on this side of the blade. Adding our little uh, bubbles. Yeah, Sydney's like, hey, I help you water in the morning, then I go kill stuff. Uh, Path of Exile, not Pillars of Eternity, but I can see the exchange there. I wish the original Pillars of Eternity was multiplayer. That'd be really sweet. Did you play the, was it 2 that just came out? Or I said just came Pillars out. Pillars of Eternity 2? Nope. Yeah, the one that came out like a year ago. What's funny is like I've never caught it when it was uh, like on sale. So oh, it's that's, so worth it. Yeah. It's n so good. Especially with the uh, turn-based mode they put in. Um, in my opinion, it makes it a lot better. Just like uh, if you're looking for a game that's like that, if you haven't played it yet, Pathfinder Kingmaker. Oh, yeah, I wonder. I saw that they were trying to get the... Uh, second one kickstarted or yeah whatever. i already actually already pledged for it because it's the first one was hundreds of hours of campaign time alone it's the biggest bang for my buck as far as video is it game. single player though yeah it yeah. is. i don't think it's multiplayer unless they put a multiplayer in i'm pretty sure it's single player let's see <clears throat> All right, so blades are blading. They look really cool. Happy with that. So the difference that I did on, on those blades, I did add a little bit of white on the ones on the left. We'll probably go back and do that at the end, depending on the contrast level. But these had scratches, and these have our cool, like, magic effect. Little bubblies. So now, let's see what we can work on next. I'm thinking we do... Let's do our amethyst purple pants, shall we? So we're going to go ahead and grab some amethyst purple here and a little bit more noir black. Thank you for the raid, Monkeys with Fire. Uh, Vaxar, I have no idea. Um, John may actually, if he's still in the chat right now, he may, he may have an answer to that. Uh, they used to be up here, actually. Give me a second to peruse the shelves because they were uh, in the... Studio, if they haven't moved, I think they've moved. Sorry, yeah, they're uh, they're not behind me anymore. So texturally, though, I think that one is just cracked and the other is not, and I don't think there's any like, I don't think there's any like bumps or anything on it. Oh, because um, Collins is obsessed over those minis since we showed them off. He loves really? them. He loves those minis. They're like his favorite. But yeah, I know, right? Weird. I wouldn't. Yeah, that, that seems like so specific. No, like, Collins oh, like... loves those statues. Okay. Noted. All right. So, uh, uh, do we need more than that? Okay, no, that's perfect. So, one to one ratio of amethyst purple to noir black. I'm just going to coat the pants and the sleeves, respectively, here. There's one strange bump that I should have caught in that prep video on this leg, but I just... 
I just messed up. I'm no good. Where's this? Okay. I may have accidentally filed down my, uh, the, the ridge on that glove there. So, pretty simple. I don't really want to go much brighter than this. So, I am going to get uh, our linen white out. You can use, use linen white, splintered bone, whatever you want. This color comes in the core kit, which we're not changing. That's staying the same. I know some people had asked about that like a while ago, and I haven't been mentioning that. So, for the future kits that are coming out, so April, May, and June, uh, we're going to be using the same base kit, so don't worry about um, swapping those out. Oh, I need to completely wash my brush here. There we go. All right, so adding some of that white here. So here is our glove check. So you can see, kind of purple, but not too saturated. And I'm going to use this to highlight up the brighter portions here on the leg. But not a lot, just a little. This I kept pretty muted. Unless you want to make them super bright. But I was figuring the cape is kind of the brightest part on this mini um, next to the blades. One, because they bounce off each other really, really well. Um, but two, it's kind of funny to uh, imagine like a sneaky rogue assassin that's like, hey, here's the brightest colors I can wear. But at the same time, for those that read the uh, Dritz series, Jarlaxle, um, I mean, they always talk about how flamboyantly he's dressed wearing like feather boas and crazy hats and he has his crazy boots and all the stuff that he wears too, so I guess it makes sense that sometimes you can have a rogue that's very, very brightly dressed if they're still a killing machine. So, now then, we're going to use Intense Brown for the shoes and gloves. We're just going to wash it down. Go ahead and apply that base coat. Thank you, sibling, for the tier one. Thank you, thank you. Now I'm going to make these much darker because they, uh, oh, actually, I have a different trick to pull. So, because what I realized looking at the finished miniature, that the, the brown here really does look close to that red. They almost look similar from a distance. So I think we're going to actually use purple mixed with noir black to give it a different tint or hue in the shadow. Uh. Chimiron, do you mean me talking or do you think that the person painting is Justin? Because I think it's funny if they think that's true because they actually just don't know what I look like. Well, Justin, John, any J name pretty much uh, works for me. So. In, in fairness, though, I will say John, Josh, and myself do look very similar. Yeah. We really, uh, unfortunately, we do. One of us is small, one of us is medium, and one of us is large. Yeah. In terms of height. <laughs> so. Cor correct. Yeah. That is, that is a fact. So that means that ReaperCon this year, whenever they have the uh, karaoke, we'll do a quartet. I mean, you have to have four of them, whatever, three, barbershop trio, whatever. Yeah, we'll do it, yeah. yeah. Although I, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, I'll be honest with you. That's fine, you can carry John, you can hold him like a baby. That's perfect, let's do it. He'll be my yeah. little backpack. Little backpack, and he'll be on the back singing like a tenor. Cameron meant the uh, portrait on the glove. Uh, I, I don't... Uh, one's a dra I mean, I, I'd be a dragon. Uh, and I don't think that's me, but I mean, I'll take it, I guess. Why not? There's the hair. Now it's you. Perfect. Just on the side. <laughs> Just on the side. That is absolute fact. Yep. 
Crusader wants to know who's taller, Josh or John. I think I'm taller than John. Yeah, you are. Yeah. You're definitely taller than John. Yeah. A lot of people are taller than John. Love you, John. Yeah. If he's still watching. Yeah. John's just like the espresso version of Justin being a large coffee. Like we're all we we're all the same potency. It's just the packaging is different. Yeah. Sometimes you want you know sixteen ounces. Sometimes okay. you only want twelve. And sometimes... I don't like I don't like the way this talk's going. All right. Oh, I don't like oh, this. We're oh, gonna, oh, we're right. gonna, oh, who has the better beer? First of all, I'm dead last in that one. For, yeah, we know, we know the answer to that question. That's it's all right. It's all right. John and I's beards grow very similarly. Mine goes up higher in the cheeks. If I don't trim mine down, it literally, like the where the middle of my nose is as tall as it'll go up my cheeks. Absolutely. Um, but then down here under the lip, John's is like full, completely filled in. Mine's not. It doesn't grow all the way underneath my bottom lip. So. And mine would actually look exactly like yours if I were allowed to grow it out. Yeah. But I can't. So. Yeah. It'll be a sad day if the pandemic gets so bad that they're like, yo, you for real got to shave your beard. And I'll be like, oh, God. Oh, no. I, I'm just wearing a respirator mask that looks like a beard. Who has the best chest hair? Oh, again, I'm going to go ahead and take, take the crown on that one, too. We don't have to have a contest on that, but. I will say, though, that the three of us are very hairy. Yeah. Well, that's. It is true. Oh, Sydney, did my shoes show up? Hey, are those shoes Bye. there? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've been waiting. I've been waiting on those shoes. Let me know if they showed up today. They're supposed to show up today. Uh, yes, Max Power. She she likes it um, medium to short length. It's not. I can't get it to Josh's length. She would. Uh, she would not enjoy that. Man, the upkeep that I have to do when the beards are this length too. Oh yeah. Hilarious. Luckily, I cut it all off on top because. <clears throat> When I had to do both, it was like, wow. Oh, did they come in? Oh, she said yes. Okay. Who has the best back hair? L luckily, oh, luckily, I don't have, um, I don't have to do much. You don't, you know, too much back hair. No, I have back hair. Yeah, I don't have back hair. I, I have like the couple random, like just a rand, and you're like, what's oh, really? going on there? Yeah. yeah. So. No, John and I think both have a lot of back hair. That's funny. All right, so I'm mixing. Amethyst purple in with our noir black, and that's the wash I'm going to put on top of all of our leather objects here. So the boots, the gloves, you name it. Oh, sorry, I forgot the uh, I forgot the belt and bags. So we'll do that too. Just check out here. Just check out. Yeah, tell us about your bodies, boys. Okay, here we go. Yeah, some, someone someone asked that, right? Someone's yeah. Like, hey, what are y'all's bodies like? Please yeah, where are the them. tokens? Huh? If you want to know about our... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not that kind of stream. Yeah, 300 bits, and Josh will tell you what uh, his uh, left ankle looks like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 500 bits, and you'll even get a picture. Oh, you get a picture. And uh, a link to his premium Snapchat. Hey, my print... No, it's OnlyFans. I've ditched Patreon. Yeah, I, I keep seeing... I ditched Patreon. I keep seeing OnlyFans. Is that a Patreon type thing? For you know what type of... you know. Really? Who... Is it not anyone else? Only... I did not know that. Okay. Pretty much, yeah. I, it's it's fairly new to me, so. Yeah. I only know it because a podcast that I watch, like, finds the cringiest people on that platform, and then they're just like, look at people are paying for. <laughs> and Jacob just, speaking of which, just dropped 500 bits. <sighs> hey, Jacob, I'm going to be honest. I don't I don't think he's taking a picture of his ankle. <laughs> or he's going to show it on stream. <clears throat> there it is. There's the <clears throat> ankle. There you go. Just for you, Jacob. There you go, Jacob. The only person that can make it happen. Now, the same way that uh, Jason sculpts, like, toilet paper monsters and everything like that, I would not be surprised if all of a sudden Josh's ankle mimic becomes a thing. Oh, gosh. Has anyone ever used a back hair brush? Uh, I mean, I think you would... Asking for a friend. Yeah, you would just have to have so many of the hairs so dense. I mean, good luck. Huh. I wonder if that's possible. My back hair's very curly there, though. <laughs> What's the podcast called? Uh, so I watch um, Your Mom's House, which is obviously the best podcast on the planet. Or, consequently, everything that's on Your Mom's House makes its way to uh, Dr. Drew After Dark, which is just as good. So, All right, now I'm going to wash down all of our 
Bootsy Wootsies, so we're gonna be using that sort of purpley noir black mix. I think mine is a little bit too thin, so I may do two coats, but it's okay. Not too awfully concerned. Painter's choice really on the accessories here, the accoutrements can be painted uh, to your discretion. Well, that's awesome, Minneath. I'm glad you are here with us. All right. Yeah, I wish I could just... I could rock a really awesome mustache. Like, it looks very proportional, because it doesn't get huge. Like, I keep it relatively small, but... You know, anything I can do to combat the double chin, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm a little fat? Let's just get that stubble. No, I'm not. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. 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 Stubble beard. Big guy's best friend. Yeah, I like that. I like that dull down a lot compared to what I did on this one because you can tell that that brown highlight is very similar to that. So using the purple, wa the purple and noir black wash, you can tell it really dulls out that brown. So I agree. I think the decision looks good. It helps a lot. <laughs> What's funny, lot. Uh, Justin? I feel yeah. like is the dog show commentator interacting with the dog breeder, right? Uh, it's yeah. very much like I've seen a lot of these in my day. And I, it looks looks great, yeah. The gate, no, the gate between the gallop is looking really good. You know, I appreciate the strong jawline. The canines look good. The pedigree on that's great. Stubble Perfect. adds shading. Looks good. The stubble on that's good. The beard's good. I like it. We're on the same page. We're on the same page. All right. So, now what we're going to do... Actually, so I'm going to take this sort of gray wash that we had, and I'm going to mix... Um, I'm gonna mix our noir black and our linen white, and we're gonna go ahead and paint the base coat on the mask here in a gray because we're gonna make it quarantine white just for fun because, hey, we're not all freaking out, right? So keep that topical. All right, so now then, we have all this good stuff right there. So. I believe I based it. Yes, I did. So this miniature was built up a lot. Wow, that was pretty cool. It was built up a lot from Noir Black. So we're going to be doing the same thing again today. I'm going to take clear red. Yes, clear red. What's funny is the graphic makes magma red look darker. But let me go ahead and demystify the world here. This is clear red. This is magma red. Magma red is like if you sneezed on red with orange. It's like right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right there. So... <clears throat> I'm going to take clear red and noir black, and that's going to give us our base color for all the clothing. You only need a little bit of the noir black with clear red, because clear red is only clear pigment. So the second you add that noir black, it's going to jump way super duper 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 dark. Darker than you could imagine. Go ahead and apply that. So last weekend uh, for Patreon, I'm gonna go ahead and paint over the belt. I'm too lazy to care. We'll fix that in post. Um, Patreon this weekend, we did the free hobby class where I converted the Bones uh, Troll, River Troll that Aaron Lovejoy painted. And then we gave it a werewolf head and then we added wings to it. So that video is available um, on Facebook and Twitch VOD, I believe. Um, so you can check that out if you were interested. I, I released that for free live um, as a part of me just trying to give people things to watch so they don't go crazy at home. Um, and then this weekend on Patreon, we are doing the advanced paint-along class where we are doing multi-source object source lighting. So we're painting a, a halfling um, that has a, I believe, I'm, I'm, it's one or the other, Bergamot Halfling Scout. I believe they have a lantern or a torch. I forget which, but either way, we're going to be painting the, the lighting from that object, um, and then we're also going to have an off-camera light source as well. So it'll be two different competing light sources, and it should be really, really fun. Remember, you can check out all of the stuff on Patreon at patreon.com slash studio. We have tiers all the way from 3 bucks to 20 really, that coincide with just the classes. Um, five bucks, you get two classes, you get one paint along, 
And then the hobby course, 10 bucks gets you an advanced class at the end of the month. So that's three uh, classes, about five hours worth of content for 10 bucks. That's paying me two bucks an hour. I appreciate you. Then you can also get private coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, one-on-one -on -one classes. It's a lantern. Thank you, sibling. Um, you can get one-on-one -on -one classes as well tied in with that. And then if you don't want uh, any sort of the structured stuff and you want one-on-one -on -one help, you can also just get private coaching as well. Paint-alongs, technique examples, whatever you want. Um, that's available through the website directly too. So big thanks to everybody that is a part of that program. Giving us fun stuff to do as we are sort of unsure about the world. Now then, on the skin, I'm just going to use Rosy Shadow. And we're going to just paint the tiny amount of face that is showing. We're just going to base coat it with this color. Character's got a real strong brow line. Funny enough, if you're painting along at home, you'll notice. But it makes sense to exaggerate some stuff like that, right? If a miniature has its face obscured by a respirating mask like that, then exaggerating the nose, the depth of the eyes, and the forehead will help sort of sell the facial structure a little bit more so than if they didn't do that. Yes, actually, Jacob, and on that uh, topic, we, for and stuff, starting next week, we'll likely show, I'm going to try to get a playlist together and do a rerun of some of her more special episodes over the course of, and that includes maybe some YouTube stuff. I might pull it from YouTube, upload it as a, as a VOD on Twitch, and then have it rerun. So things that have never actually ever aired on Twitch may air um, from previous content. Just because, you know, it gives you guys something to kind of tune in for. All right, so now mixing in more of our clear red, starting to highlight up the body here. And I'm really focusing on sort of the center of the chest here of the abdomen, pulling it up towards the middle. You can see how I'm applying it right there. Hey, Mike Disney, what's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? That's my Mike Disney voice. I like that. Yeah. I do. How are you doing, Mike Disney, by the way? I saw he had printed a Overwatch miniature. It was the last thing I saw he was up to. I don't think that'll be the case, Deadbeat, based on all of the... Uh the, the things that have been circulated, obviously anything can change, but it would seem as if um, a lot of that kind of stuff is considered essential, and I don't think it'll stop. Yeah, private mail, I don't think it's going to stop. Ever, yeah. It no would just what. it would literally be them like having sick employees. You know what I mean? Correct, yeah. And then if you're ordering off something like Amazon, then yeah, like your... So, you know, I had stuff that was Amazon Prime shipping that um, took five days to get to me, six days to get to me, because it's no longer an essential item. So, but I ordered soap and that got to me immediately, like the next day. So it's just kind of um, whatever you're ordering and where you're ordering it from. So, you know, like I had, so uh, the people at Parabellum Games that, that make the war game Conquest uh, Last Argument of Kings. Um, so they are sending me some stuff to make some content with. And, uh, you know, there's no telling when that would ever arrive. I have no idea how fast it'll get here with what's going on, but... Um, I know they mailed it out, so that will be very uh, cool whenever it gets here. But And then, so I also have to mail back stuff, too. So I'm the studio painter for Moonstone, the game. And uh, I will have some more box art for them finished up. And uh, I may actually end up holding on to it all. But either way, it has to be mailed back to the UK. So we'll see how long that takes. But the event that they wanted me to get all that painting done for was Salute um, over in Europe. And that got either canceled or postponed. So... Um, that delivery date is now kind of so, but they are having me paint for them in an online convention now though. So, uh, I'll be finishing up one of the box art paint jobs for them during that time slot, which will be pretty cool. So I am interested to see kind of where those boundaries are going to get pushed to at this point. Like online how stuff? far, yeah, how far are we going to go with online stuff? how much of our culture and our community is just going to switch to this purely digital thing where it, it could be 
as far as adaptation, very interesting to see. Well, and for stuff like this, like an online convention, which uh, if it's professionally done, because there are lots of people doing um, their own online things because like Adeptagon was canceled and whatever, like it's going to be extremely messy because it's not anything official. It's just kind of people donating time. So like, however that's going to play out is how it's going to play out. But like, if a convention sits down then instead and they're like, hey, I want to do X, Y, Z, let's get 10 people in there. And they have someone in charge, you know what I mean? Like actually keeping track. I feel like it can be cool, but it's definitely not like, if you know, online businesses are going to be running discounts and promos and whatever, which is cool. Um, and, and that side of it makes sense to me, but that's kind of the whole thing too. Like a lot of the conventions that people were going, like Adepticon's a war gaming convention. So it's like you're going to play a game and, and take part in tournaments so that that itch isn't getting scratched. So, you know, I, I do still see those parts of conventions happening, but it's kind of like Cyber Monday, right? Like businesses are able to utilize Cyber Monday and run specials. Um, it'll just be interesting to see. We'll just kind of have to see how it's played out. Like obviously the painting lessons and, and things like that are never as good in general as they can be in person um, at, at conventions. ReaperCon is a good example, right? Like. A lot of the stuff you learn there can't necessarily be done unless some things were done ahead of time. <clears throat> but it will be intriguing to see kind of where all that goes because now everybody's kind of hopping on board trying to figure out how to make it work. But a lot of retailers, conventions are their, their big money maker, So we'll see exactly how it kind of transfers over. But I agree. So now I'm going to take, finally, our Magma Red. That'll be our last highlight color here. I think a lot of people too now are realizing working from home can be better and it can be worse. <laughs> if you have to be really productive, sometimes having a really annoying micromanaging boss actually makes a big difference. You know what I mean? Right. It helps, but hurts right at the same time. It's, yeah. It's, then you realize, wow, I, I actually need that. For me, it's taken about four or five years to where now I'm like, I kind of know what I can actually get done in a day. Right. Like I've, I've kind of hit that point where it's like, yeah, I know what I can and can't do. So, but a lot of people, there's like this Google Doc that had like 13,000 people contributing to it for like different resources and tips from working from home, thing, things like that. And I thought that was pretty cool. So now I'm taking our Magma Red. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Magma Red. There we go. <laughs> Highlighting up just some of the folds and corners here of this garment. Yeah, I keep reading about stuff like that and hearing about that too, Zen Bacon. Everyone keeps saying that their house is the cleanest it's ever been now because it's become you're kind of like you're there all the time and you've got all this extra time. There's no reason not to, right? And your laundry is always done and put away, which is crazy. Not me. Oh, okay. Well, you know. Not me. I have like a lot of laundry that's dirty though. And then the laundry room is where my roommate is now working. Oh. So I can't do that during the day because he has to be on the phone. So it's yeah, kind of like. I that's don't, fair. Yeah. Because just for his sake, like if I if I get a customer service representative and I hear that they're at home, my expectation of service immediately drops, which probably isn't true, right? But so I'm like, I'm just going to make sure there's not noise in the background for you because I know how that affects me on the other side. All right. So now I'm actually going to use our intense brown mixed with a little bit of magma red, mixed with a little bit of uh, noir black as a wash. And I'm just going to put that over the skin here so you'll be able to see. Right there. Really, really easy, effective wash. And then I'll apply it to the gray as well. Since we are painting something white, I had sort of a bluish gray. Adding a brown wash on top will allow it to look like linen, since we're going to highlight it with linen white. Surprise, surprise. So. Pull it out of the recesses there on the eyes a little bit. There we go. All right. Yeah, I do like the blades this time around. I think that adding the weird kind of soda bubble effect was an interesting twist. But we're almost dry there. Yeah, I I commute in order to get here for Reaper. I think about it's it's on average it's an hour, maybe a little longer depending on traffic. Um, and that's one way. So the amount of money I'm saving right now on gas is pretty insane. Gas is under a dollar in Oklahoma. Really? Yeah. That's 
That's crazy. Like when I lived in Oklahoma, the gas prices were always way less than everywhere else, but yeah. now it's under a dollar. So that isn't. I don't think I, I haven't seen gas under a dollar since. It's been like thirty years. Yeah, it's yeah. been a long time. Long time. Back in my day, you had to park your car on an oil geyser. I just hope it does. Uh... Hope it worked. <laughs> hope it worked. So. Oh, gas is nearly four dollars in Seattle. Did it go up in Seattle? Interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. That seems like crisis gouging. All right. Now we still have to paint the pommels, handles, all that good stuff, hilties on the daggers, but not too concerned there. Now then, I'm going to be using linen white, and I'm going to be highlighting up the mask first just because it's so much brighter than the skin i would rather not accidentally get it on the skin and have to repaint the skin so i'm gonna add a little bit of our intense brown to my gray mix here just so that this first application makes a little bit more sense color wise so this is the color i'm going for we got to find a, a clean part here So here we have just like a dirty white, okay? It's a little bit brown. It's so funny how not used I am to this brush because I know everybody has seen me uh, on camera using the other brush to like the thinnest, babiest lines. And this brush, I'm like, wow. Big old fat. I dressed yeah. myself today, like, wow. All right. Actually, uh, Drifter, yeah, I think we're probably approaching near the end. I'm sorry. But it'll be on the VOD right afterwards if you would like to rewatch it. If Collins gets here relatively sooner than later, we are planning on doing a little warlording, so we may uh, really jank stream it if we are up to the challenge. But I feel like if we can at least squeeze that in, life will be a little bit cooler. Especially since, like, um, you know, Texas Toy Soldier, where I play games, they're closed. So, no fun. Yeah, I imagine lots of game stores are closed at this point. Yep. I would hope for the safety of everybody involved. Yeah, the, the list that I brought today to play Warlord with is very entertaining. So it is three miniatures, two of which are just there to fill points. So uh, otherwise, I brought a huge big boy. All right. More linen white here on the mask. Let's see. Yeah, this I am like fighting with this brush. Like I I see the way that it works. This brush this brush reminds me a lot of a Escada uh, brush, which I bought a few of in the past. I forget the first part of the Escada. It's uh, some uh, something Escada, a Spanish brush company. But the sable feels very similar. All right. Now I'm just going in directly with our linen white. There we go. She's like, I'm here to purge the dungeon. Just don't come near me. Social distancing. <laughs> You're attacked by a mob of goblins. You're like, social distancing. No. Goblins don't care. Yeah, exactly. They're just carriers. They can't, they can't spread it. Mike, what a uh, what warlord faction are you thinking? So the factions that I if I there are about five that if I could build a list out of them they'd be really fun. Uh, I mean I I can but I just don't want to spend you know endless amounts of money to play randomly right. Um, but I really like the werewolf faction. I think they're really really strong. They have some cool stuff. If someone does Sisters of the Blade or Sisterhood of the Blade, whichever one that is. Um, that one's really, really cool. They have some fun uh, doctrines you can use. And then also uh, Razig's Revenge is a list that I'm also intrigued in building. That They're not in either of the books. They're like an online exclusive army. Um, you can find all their stuff on that third-party uh, Warlord fan website. But they're really cool. And I was thinking since it is 
uh, ReaperCon, right? ReaperCon is a uh, pirate themed, that it would be fun to do the undead pirate army. Um, Razig's Revenge is a cool army just because they're super shooty. They have like cannons and everybody shoots guns. And there's bang, bang, pew, pew, all that good stuff. Um, which in Warlord can be the difference of life and death, depending on which uh, list you're running. So, but how many books are rules? There are just two. Um, and the, I, I don't know if they include all of the army lists and uh, armies in the second book, but both teach you how to play. Um, and then, of course, there's an online army builder that you can use uh, that has all the other information that you could ever possibly need. So, um, but that's in the Reapers Warlord group on Facebook. All of those things are. I will be continuing my playing card conversion for everybody, too, in the near future. So I'm making um, cards for reference for gameplay for everybody, too, so that are the size of a standard playing card. So you can print them and laminate them, or you can print them and just put them in a card sleeve and have them on the table. So, um, But yeah, all of those links are available in the uh, Facebook group Reapers Warlord. And I want to get more more engagement in that group too, like having people post like the funniest, craziest list that they can come up with, things like that. That's what I've been doing for fun is like, what's the most annoying list I can create with like the most annoying game conditions possible? And I've been I've been coming up with a couple. Some of them are way more expensive than others, of course, because you have to buy like a bunch of one random mini. But okay, so now the hardest part of the miniature. I know, hold your breath, it's, it's really, really crazy. Hone steel. So, am I thinking of doing a print on demand? No, they're free, HM Road Dog. It takes me about an hour to an hour, hour and 45 minutes to do a full faction. Um, and then it takes me about, so it's about two hours of work to do all of the cards and then the gameplay reference for all of the different special abilities and combat abilities and spells that your entire faction would use. So think of it this way, like you would print all the third party stuff um, separately. So you would have like, uh, you know, maybe f maybe four to eight sheets, depending on how many spellcasters your, your faction has. Print that out. That's kind of like your, you know, that's kind of just your reference for anything you possibly have. And then you print all the cards separately and then you build your army using those cards. And then those cards will always reference the other documents. So, um, you know, it doesn't take it doesn't take me too long to to convert all of it, make PDFs, and and upload them, yada yada yada. Um, but it does take a while. Uh, the the cards are 300 DPI, so I have to upscale some stuff and then change a few things here and there. But beyond that, it's I mean, it's it's a lot of work, but it's just tedious. And then I'm just quick with it because Photoshop is what I live inside of, so I can knock all that stuff out really 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 fast. <laughs> All right, so I'm just waiting on those to dry. Four hundred and thirty-two unpainted minis. Well, you got you got some work ahead of you. That is uh, that's a lot of minis. That's a lot of minis. Yeah, that is kind of funny. Everybody's like, "I'm going to paint everything that I own." No, you're not. We know how this goes. No, you're not. <laughs> Best intentions, I'm sure. All right, so now I'm going to wash down the metal that we just painted. Ta-da! I think that's it. We obviously don't have a crazy base this time around. I mean, I'll kind of... <clears throat> we'll just make a kind of random cruddy color here to put... on top of stuff. I'm going to mix some other color in there. Make it darker. Let's see. I'm going to get some jungle moss. Here we go. So, here we are. I was dark in this since it was just zenithal previously. All right. Dun, 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 dun. So, that is it for her. Remember, uh, next week on Monday is going to be the 
community review stream. So I want to see photos of all of you that have done any painting along with these minis in the kits so far. Um, I know John has a lot of them. You can tag him and stuff on Instagram uh, or Reaper Miniatures in general. Just make sure you say this is from Miniature Monday. Um, but if you want to guarantee that those photos are somewhere, send them to me uh, on Facebook. So send them directly to the page, Mini Painting Studio. Um, just go on the page and then hit the message button and then just send me your photos. Um, and then that way I'll have your name to credit you. Uh, and then if you don't use Facebook and you're watching, uh, then send it to Reaper Mini on Twitter, on Instagram, something like that, and John will get it on, on that end. So, um, but then that way we can look at everybody's cool paint jobs. We can see um, any changes you did, or if you added something funny from the stream, right? Like adding glowing eyes, anything random that we changed. Um, and then the dragon that we've been working on, um, yeah, make sure you tag it, right? Uh, you include John knows that it's for Miniature Monday. Um, if you're not sending them to me, just sending them to me will be the easiest way because then I'll just save it in a folder and you'll be good to go. Um, but, uh, and then of course, so the rest of the week, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're going to be working on doing more detailing on the big dragon here as well as we finish up the shadow dragon and get him ready for completion on that final stream. You can see all the work that we've done so far. It's funny, the color balance is like crazy on this camera. Um, but, so we're using a flesh tone currently to do all of the highlighting. So that way when we tint it, the actual highlighting, it turns into something like this. So it's a much, uh, a much more subtle way to highlight and it's super quick if you're gonna be doing something like literally lining every single scale on a dragon and <laughs> creating texture and, and all that good stuff. So, but at that point in time, this guy should be ready to rock and roll. Um, but remember you can watch it every single day, 2 p.m. CST as we work through that. Um, and then, only other last plug too, right? If you wanna hop in on the Patreon classes, everything like that, um, you can see different examples of our miniatures here. These two are two miniatures from our basic uh, levels. These are full paint-alongs at the $5 per month level. And then, of course, the more advanced stuff is at the $10 level, which you can see here. This is one of my favorite miniatures, the Duckman Warrior, really, really, really fun. Um, and then this weekend, like I was saying on Saturday, we're gonna be doing a object source lighting class and that's relatively it. So um, again, uh, all of the information about uh, the new kits coming out will be out there eventually. We know that they're now happening. Um, I'm gonna try and go and grab uh, all of the miniatures for the next three months worth of kits and the paint and all of that stuff. I need to leave these on actually. These are my my barrier to the outside world, these, these nasty boys. Um, but so I'm gonna have everything working. Um, hopefully by next month or next Monday, I should have April's kit done, painted, photographed, and then they can start clicking away here, assuming life is still clicking away. Uh, and then all that info will be posted and you guys will be ready. Remember next month is jungle theme. And I mean, I don't really think you'll be able to guess what's involved in the jungle theme kit. I mean, maybe you'll probably get close to the idea, um, but I'm excited for it. I know it's gonna look really, really, really cool. Um, the, the color palette's really sweet. We should get a really cool, really cool job on that. But um, so anyway, we are going to be hanging out here. I'm going to be waiting until Collins gets here, of course, which is probably 30 minutes or so. But we will be raiding someone. So um, if you can hang around, uh, if you don't want to watch uh, later this bad boy, if we do jank stream it, you can see I brought, I brought the big boy that I'm going to be using. This is a huge metal dragon from Reaper the brood dragon. I liked my completely inappropriate stutter there. That was weird. <laughs> Caffeine's hitting different. Actually, I love this sculpt because look at how they did the scales on the wings. Like, that's really cool, right? Yeah, it almost looks like uh, swords or something. Yeah, really, really weird. I mean, the rest of the dragon, not like that at all, but this is very intriguing to me, this, this pattern. But um, yeah, this guy is really heavy. Everything's double pinned. You can see his feet are double pinned. Everything on this bad boy is pinned, so. But where are we headed today? We're in a raid. Seanot uh, Bush. Seanot, sweet. All right, well, make sure you guys uh, give him a big hello. Tell him that we sent you. Uh, and um, tell him he's very cute today. That's what we want. Yeah, tell, tell, tell 
tell me he's looking cute today. Yeah, be like, hey, you're looking cute today. He'll be like, what is going on? So yeah, he'll have no idea. Um, but he's really cool too, guys. Yeah, he's really, really nice. So uh, we may see you in a while. Otherwise, stay safe. You'll see me tomorrow on Facebook painting up the other dragon. And that's it. Bye, guys. Stay sane. Stay safe. Spread the Reaper love. Spread the Reaper, Reaper love, not Corona. Don't leave your house. Yes, correct. Spread love. <laughs> Spread love, not the Reaper. virus. Absolutely. There you go. That's, that's our catchphrase here. So. Thanks, guys. You have a great day. Bye, guys.